Morning. I'm Dr. Nuss, and um, th I just wanted to let you know that in the 1980s I used to do the old uh, pectus excavatum repair, uh, but was very unhappy with it. And then one day I got the idea that I could do it differently. I never expected that uh, it would become uh, popular. I just was doing it because that's what I felt I needed to do. And then after 10 years, I put my experience uh, on paper and, and published it and since then everybody has been very interested in the procedure and uh, it has become uh, quite popular worldwide. Uh, so um, uh, we do a lot of these operations now. Uh, we've had very good results and very, very few complications and I've been very pleased with the outcome. Thank you very much. This is Austin. It's one o'clock in the morning. He's doing just fine. How you doing, pal? All right. I'm drinking some apple juice. All right. Turn right around here and talk to your friends. I'm drinking some apple juice so that I can try to go to the bathroom. Dr. Nuss told me to take it easy for the first few days and I did and after about five days I was able to return to work and nine days after they were removed I was playing football, backyard football with my friends and everything was fine, no pain and it was great. I graduated from medical school in South Africa at the University of Cape Town in 1963. Okay, and you were a surgeon? Uh, well, initially I was an intern. And I did my internship in South Africa and then I came to the States in 1966 to do general surgery training at the Mayo Clinic. Okay. And I was there for five years. And then I went back to South Africa and then did two years of pediatric surgery training at the Children's Hospital in Cape Town. And from there I moved to a faculty position at the medical school in Durban. Uh, and um, from there I came to Norfolk, Virginia. Okay, so you've been since. in this hospital since 19... I arrived here in Norfolk in 1977, and I became Chief of Surgery in 1985. So you do all types of surgery, but this one caught your attention. Yeah, I, I'm a general pediatric surgeon, and, and pediatric surgeons basically uh, operate on newborn babies uh, who have congenital malformations. So that was really my career. 
Uh, however, one of the operations that we did were children who had a sunken in chest or pectus excavata, and it was that particular procedure that uh, I felt was not being um, properly done uh, with the techniques then available. And so we developed a new technique for dealing with pectus excavata. And this has been an ongoing development process. Yeah, we've been doing this now for 20 years, and we've made many modifications. Uh, both to the technique and also we developed new instruments for the operation, sure. which were not available before. So my son Austin is patient number 600 and some, and uh, he got the two-bar system right. and the three-year program, <laughs> right. right? And we've been very pleased with it, and uh, I think he has too. And, well, uh, he's been an excellent patient. In fact, he's been a model patient. So okay. He's um, obviously brave and tough, and uh, it also takes that. He, he did the exercises that we prescribed because even though we do the operation like any uh, musculoskeletal operation, there's uh, exercise required. Uh, if you have knee surgery, you have to have physical therapy afterwards, and uh, so we prescribe exercises. And some patients, uh, for reason not clear to me, don't do the exercises. But uh, he was very good about doing his exercise. Okay. Now, this particular process has a history to it. I guess there was a time in history it wasn't done at all. And then it became a procedure they felt like necessary yes. well, to do? until the beginning of the 20th century, chest surgery was uh, very rarely done because uh, they didn't have respirators. They didn't have um, means of controlling respiration when they open the chest because there's a negative pressure inside the chest and the lungs collapse when one opens the chest. So really until the early part of the 20th century there was no such thing as thoracic surgery. At the beginning of the 20th century the medical profession started to learn how to cope with the, the change in pressures and the collapsed lung and so thoracic surgery particularly during the First World War started to become commonplace. Uh, but because of the concern about collapsed lung, uh, when they first started operating for depressed chest, they tried to stay out of the chest. And so the only way to do that was to open up the chest wall and uh, remove all the muscles and attack the ribs from the outside. Nowadays, since we have no concerns about going into the chest because of all the equipment we have to deal with, uh, lung collapse and uh, monitoring respiration and being able to take over the patient's respiration, uh, we find it is much better to go into the chest and deal with the problem from inside rather than from outside. Right. I have some very vivid uh, pictures you gave me, uh, the bars going in and the difference it made just from looking inside. I guess down the road, maybe one day in the future, this procedure will be antiquated and maybe it'll be DNA or some type of engineering, something they can do to... Absolutely. We can, we, we can never look into the future with any certainty, but the, we're, we here at this medical school are actually uh, in the process of, um, of searching for the genes that cause this problem because it is no question that it is uh, uh, genetically um, related. We have many families with multiple children uh, involved, and that has been known for over 100 sure. years that it it's, has a genetic uh, basis. And maybe we will be able to do some genetic engineering in the future. That will correct. Very problem. good. All right. Well, it's been our pleasure to know you and for you to serve us, and uh, we've been very pleased uh, with the results, and I'm sure a lot of other parents have too. And we'll be back in a year. Good. Well, I look forward to seeing you back.